Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Last week we fitted the Power HD 20kg servo to the TRX4, which did seem to be making the Beck in the Traxxas ESC struggle a bit. So this week we're going to have a look at some different Beck installs. We'll start with your bog standard Beck. It's got an input on one side that connects to your main battery, and it's got an output that supplies the 5 or 6 volts to power the radio gear. This hobby wing Beck has a nice manual with some good clear diagrams. Most Becks are fairly simple devices like this one, with just an input and an output. Some like the Castle Creations Becks are programmable too, but they connect up to the truck in largely the same way. So here we have a representation of the TRX4 as Traxxas intended. We've got the main battery, a LiPo in this case, hooked up to the ESC. The ESC has a built-in BEC that takes the 7.4 or so volts from the battery and converts it to the 6 volts the radio and servos want to see. It's a good simple setup that as long as you don't go silly with the servos, works a treat. When you fit a beefier servo, the built-in BEC can start to struggle to keep up. If you're lucky, all that will happen is the servo will appear to be a bit weaker than you might expect. Worst case, you could damage the BEC. That's unlikely though, as it will probably cut out due to over temperature trying to save itself. But you don't really want to rely on that. So what we do is add an external back like the Hobby King one. The input connects to the battery. Usually if you replace the connector on the ESC, you'd solder the back wires and the ESC wires together to the connector, making it all look nice and clean. The output of the back connects to a spare channel on the receiver. The Traxxas one has two steering channels, so the empty one works just fine. Now, at the moment, we've got both the external BEC and the ESC's BEC connected to the receiver. Now, they're both supplying 6 volts. Well, they will both be supplying somewhere near 6 volts, but they'll never quite be exactly the same. That means we'd have current flowing between the two BECs, quite possibly a lot of current. Set up like this, we will probably let some of the magic smoke out one or the other, not long after you connect it up. Fear not though, all we need to do is pop the red wire from the servo connector on the ESC's connection to the receiver, and then it's isolated. And there we have the basic, quick and simple Beck install. This is what 90% of trucks run, it works and it doesn't take that much fiddling around to make it go. However, it's not the best setup. We can change it around a bit and share the load using both the Becks to supply different bits of the truck. First, I'm going to shrink the receiver box as it's going to get in the way. This disconnects the external BEC and the steering servo at the same time. Now we can connect the 6 volts and the ground output from the BEC directly to the steering servo. Reconnect the red wire from the ESC's BEC to the receiver to power the mini servos. And lastly, connect the signal pin from the steering servo to the receiver. Now you've got the ESC's BEC running all the low power bits, where it's always going to be more than up to the job. And the external BEC's sole job is to power the steering servo. It's still a fairly simple setup. You can cut and solder the wires, or Holmes Hobbies in the States sell a little harness that makes it mostly plug and play. I'll stick a link for you in the description. That's not the end of it though. There's a downside to this install. As soon as we connect the battery, the external BEC will instantly power on, powering up the steering servo. The rest of the radio system only powers on after pressing the power button on the ESC. Not the end of the world, but we can do better. While browsing around looking at other BECs, I found this one. It's a KNT 5 amp with switch, sold here in the UK by Component Shop. Other than the extra pair of wires for the switch, it's exactly the same as the Hobby Wing. We've got the input side, this time with a BEC connector rather than just the bare wires. And at the other end, we've got the servo connector that we connect up to the receiver in the basic install. The interesting bit on this one though is the switch. It's not just in the line with the input or output, turning things off like a light switch. It's a little bit cleverer than that. Under the metal can on the BEC will be a switch mode controller chip. Its goal in life is to look after things so we get a nice 5 or 6 volts on the output. Some of these little chips have an enable pin, or sometimes called a bar shutdown, but they both have the same result. If we change the switch for an auto switch, good name, I know, I spent ages thinking about it, give it a connection to the battery for some power, and we'll need to connect the output from the ESC's back, that'll give us a fully automatic system. 
When we plug in the battery and press the power button on the ESC, it will turn on its BEC, which the auto switch sees and turns on the external BEC for us. And this is where it's going to get a bit geeky. On the little board, we've got two transistors and five resistors that do all the hard work for us. Now, I'm not going to go into huge detail. This is an RC channel after all. But when the ESC is turned off, the transistor on the right is left on, taking the BEX enable to ground, turning it off too. But with the ESC turned on, the left transistor gets turned on too. It turns the right hand transistor off, which enables the BEX. Great fun. All we do now is a bit of cutting, splicing and soldering, but I'm not going to do that on camera. Here we go then, stuck to the front of the steering servo we've got the BEC. It's up there so the 6 volt wires to the servo can be as short as possible for the least loss. Power to the BEC comes directly from the battery connector. The wires are soldered to the ESC's battery wires directly at the XT60. On the back of the servo we've got the little auto switchboard. It's an easy place to mount it as the ESC 6 volts come straight up the servo wire. That just leaves the little orange wire, which is the steering servo signal from the receiver to the servo. Now, my explanation probably isn't the best in the world, but hopefully it will give you a good idea about some of the types of BEC install. There's various other ways of installing BECs as well, all with some pros and cons, and of course the difficulty of wiring them up. All that's left is to power up the system and see the final result. I've already got the transmitter powered up, so we can connect up the battery. And just like the stock setup, there's absolutely no feedback whatsoever. If we press the button on the ESC, its green light comes on, as well as the red light on the BEC, which means it all seems to be working. We can of course turn off the ESC too, which in turn turns off the BEC. I think the only little issue is that rather bright red light. I think we might have to pop a little bit of electrical tape over it, as that's going to leave a bit of a glow going at night. In action, it seems to be working pretty well. It's still struggling a little bit, but it seems a fair bit better than when the servo was powered through the ESC. Also, it's a little bit unfair as the tyres have been freshly cleaned and are rather tacky. They're really gripping the surface. I think outside on the dirt, it's going to go lock to lock quite easily. Well, that's it for this week then. A bit more down the geeky path than usual. I hope it wasn't too far though. I try to inspire curiosity rather than flat out teach, as I don't think that's what you're really here for. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, by all means hit the like button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe if you're not already? Thanks for watching. Bye guys.